smoking farm with Edda. It's Podcast Edo, and I'm back with another video. In today's episode, we have our ninth podcast interviewee of Jay Hitori. Also, before we begin, everyone, um, I have to play this song right here that goes. Yeah, that's our warning sound, because you know what it is, and um... Now we'll start the interview, and I think this is definitely going to be, I believe, an early or mid birthday special. So here is the interview. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the podcast with my ninth guest here, Jay Hitori. Hello, what's up, man? Hey, thanks for having me. You're very welcome, man. So, um, basically, the first thing I like to start off with is, uh, how did you uh, find YouTube for for starters? Like, when when did you start getting hooked up with YouTube? Like, as a creator or as a viewer? Both, as both. Um, I found YouTube um, two thousand and. When when did uh <laughs> YouTube started in two thousand four something like that? Whoa! Um, <laughs> Dang! We were watching um we were watching we were watching a lot of wrestling videos at the time. Funny thing is that what people don't know, a lot of porn stars used to post a lot on YouTube at the time. A lot mm. of like they wouldn't post like sex clips or anything like that. It would just be like them dancing or something like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> and at the time, um, at the time, if you knew how to get like bypass through stuff, so this was high school. So right, I was in middle school, two thousand four. So we'll say two thousand two thousand eight. Okay, my freshman year because I graduated in two thousand ten. Oh shit! Wait a minute. <laughs> my graduate 2006 is when Jarvis passed, so 2007, 8, 9, 10. I graduated. Okay, so 2006. My bad, not 2006. No, nah, no, it's all good. Like, it, yeah. that is great. You were, like, literally at the forefront when it all began. Like, did yeah. you did you actually know what it was actually going to be before or what it was now? No. It was actually going to be a dating site. Like, the very first video of this thing called I'm at the Zoo. That was literally a guy trying to hook up with somebody, and oh, shoot. I'm honestly hoping at that point the person gets his luck. Because I'm like, think about it. The first person that had something on YouTube, there's no way that this person hasn't gotten anything. <laughs> like, think I mean, of <laughs> probably, that means a lot of that means a lot of creators right kind of follow his footsteps. Pretty much, you know, and yeah. then um. Like, as the history goes by, there was, like, us, cat videos, and then, like, the biggest uh, thing I remember when I first got on it from 2006 or, and seven was, like, yeah. it's called YouTube Poop, a.k.a., like, memes. Like, I, memes. I know about YouTube Poop, yeah. Oh, man. Like, yeah, that's when um, the Mario <laughs> Brothers had one. Mario Brothers. Yeah, yeah. My favorite one of all time was, like, the Edda and Eddie ones. Oh, man. Yeah. That, um... I, they also did a Legend of Zelda one. Too. Yes, yes, the yeah. CDI game. Yeah. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> it takes us. It's um. Speaking of YouTube, what was uh your most favorite video that you got to do on YouTube of all time? Like, what's your favorite one? Uh, okay. Um, the vlog I did when I went back to Nashville. Um, because I'm technically from. Uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, born and raised? My, Sorry. No, 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 no. I was born in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I was, um, I was born in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I left Indiana at the age of, I think, like five, something like that. Gotcha. And then, um, I, I was raised in Nashville, East Nashville. So that's home, technically. Yes. Yeah, I, I can see um, that. 
Um, but the reason why that video is so sentimental for me is because hmm. um, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. That's probably one of the most best videos for me because my little sister passed away, and that's she's in that video, so gotcha. it means a lot to me. So that's it's probably my favorite one. Um, but I didn't answer your question all the way. Um, I didn't start YouTube until 2010. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, but I was never consistent though. I didn't yeah. become consistent until 2015. Okay, that's, that's that sounds about right too. Yeah, that, that's when I was like, okay, I can I can probably do something with this. It's yeah. actually funny because the next year is when I officially start YouTube, but you know, I just do. But the thing was, it was completely different than like what I do like right now. Like right now. It's like this, but mm -hmm. like I said previously, it was when I was mixing like my favorite shows and stuff and putting it together. I rarely showed myself on the camera and now like it went right. in full circle and I'm like, I'm doing like reports of Asia and I'm like, you know, this is the best thing ever. I mean, to be honest, man, you have a, a really good platform going and just building really well. You know, um, I respect the podcast. Honestly, I respect anybody who do podcasts because I feel like a lot of people aren't prepared to actually have a conversation with someone they like or maybe they don't like. You know, so right. I, I just think that what you're doing is actually really dope. So you get a lot of respect for you on that. Thank you, man. Th thanks mm -hmm. for the support, man. Like of course. this, like I said, side note for my fam Jay Hattori. When I did my second episode, this is when. He commented on it, and I know it's been, a, like I said, it's been a long time. Like, even, like, when we saw each other last, like, because, um, you know, that place, uh, that place is gone, completely gone. And, oh, really? Yeah, it got, uh, last year they just, they just, uh, they tore it down and everything. So, and then, uh. so we had to live, like, right next to it. And then, uh -huh. uh, for me, you know, I had to, um, I think... Before I did my Flinko video, I was in another place for a bit. Well, before that, I, like like I said, I live right next door to CVI Marriott. Then I had I had to move out early because there was a little bit of stuff going on that uh, was accidental. But it completely just they they had to you know I had to go. But thankfully, you know my family was there to move me out, especially with. Uh, this specific thing, like with this, you know, this apartment right here, I'm now living closer to, uh, to, uh, full cell now. So that's, okay. that's a good, that's the great part that they were there both times. And it was also crazy because this video I did for run and gun, mm -hmm. it was pre planned, but I didn't know it was pre planned because I knew I'm like, well, I'm going to take a break for a while, but it's like so much <laughs> other stuff. So it was like, it was just, it felt crazy that I pre-planned before I even knew that I'd do it. So, I mean, that's um, what really happens, though. Yeah. Like, as, as a creator, because, like, we'll think of something, and then we'll be like, okay, we want to do this, and something might stop us from doing that. Right. Know? So, it, it happens all the time. Yeah. That's, that's dope, though. Speaking of the shirt that you got on right here, is, um, PlayStation, um, PlayStation the very first yeah. one, I believe. Yeah. It was... It's two years, I think, either two or three years before I was, you know, in this world, for sure. Um, but, so, PlayStation, um, I see that you are a good, a great streamer and you game a lot. Oh, uh, when was the first time you started gaming and what is your favorite game of all time? Oh, uh, wow. Well, I started gaming because of my cousin Jamar and my older brother, Doug. Gotcha. Um, well, we call him Lil. Well, he got too many nicknames. You know, we call him Dougie, Doug, all types. Wayne, Lil Wayne, Chewy. Uh, he got too many nicknames. Um, so we just gonna call him Dougie. Dougie, um, all right. It was uh, <laughs> my older brother Dougie, um, my older cousin Jamar, and my older cousin Javon. Mm. Um, Jamar was the first person in the family to have a uh, regular Nintendo. Okay. Oh, the uh, which Nintendo was it? Was like the, fir the first the first NES? No, 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 no. This was the actual the regular. This is where you had to pop it up and you had to slide the disc in. 
S N E S is where you put the disc in. Oh, oh wait, oh this you, you're talking about the uh the C D? No, no, this was a, a hard copy. Uh, uh, I wish I had one in my hand. But the disc not the disc, but the uh cassette, I guess, it looked like this. Okay, let me see. Would, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah oh would put it in that way. Oh, okay. That's where uh Duck Hunt was on. Duck Hunt. Yeah, that's what I was saying, the original NES. That's that's yeah. the original, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's um, funny because, like, I was, th I guess the other thing we were probably both thinking is, like, the original Famicom, which is, like, completely different. Like, that was the... Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, that's exactly what I was saying, the first ever yeah, yeah. NES. That was, wow, dang. Um, my cousin had Duck Hunt. And right, at right. At the time, I was the, the baby, I guess. Yeah. So, I was playing Duck Hunt, and... Uh, funny thing, I don't know if they remember this, but I remember this. There was a bet. This is where my competitiveness was born. Mm. There was a bet that whoever could kill the most ducks and actually like win, um, you do nothing would happen to you. But if you lost, us, you would have to swallow a pink hole. Oh and my so, god! Of course, I lost, so I had to swallow a pink. Nah. I did it because they got me good, man. They knew dang well I was going to be good at that game at that time. By the way, for the Duck Hunt game, is was uh, was it just like the regular controller or did you guys have the no, Nintendo we gun? The, we had the actual gun. Wow. Yeah. That's gamer for life. Um, <laughs> but, um, what was your favorite? Like, it could come from not just your shirt, just like what is your favorite game of like all time? <sighs> Probably, this is hard. It's okay. But but probably Tenchu. Tenchu, Tenchu okay. Uh, Tenchu is basically a shinobi game or a ninja game, for the, right? You know, however they want to call it. Um, my favorite character of all time would be Rikamaru. Because I feel like Rikamaru birthed Kakashi because they look exactly the same. All right. Identical. Identical to each other. Yeah. Speaking. Yeah. Speaking of which, another another thing I've noticed that you've been a big fan of with gaming is like anime. So, oh, yeah. what would your favorite anime of all time be? My favorite of all time. Yeah. Um, and also uh, the first, like the first one you've seen. Sometimes it could be both, but you know. You did me a favor. <laughs> okay, so, okay. The first anime I've ever seen, I was uh, I was four years old. All right. Um, because my father was stationed in Japan at the time. Oh my God! What? Yeah, my father was in the air force and he was stationed in Japan. Mm. But he came home and he also was retiring soon anyway. Right. Um, but he had this box of like imported Japanese stuff, <laughs> and my very first anime I've ever seen was Gundam. Okay, wow. Yeah. Gundam. So, That's, that is great. Like, yeah. did, did you, on that note, did you, like, go to school in Japan, or were you just no, there? No, no, no. I was, I, I was never born, I've never been to Japan a day in my life. Okay. It's just Besides that, oh, wait, you weren't yeah. there at four? No. Oh, okay, I got you. Wait, on that note, you never went outside the U.S.? No, at, not yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm on uh, the same boat though. <laughs> yeah. Um, funny thing, me and my me and my lady uh, plan on going to Japan sometime soon. Wow. Uh, um, I know, and they're opening everything up from you know yeah. from what was going on two years ago with the seas. It's finally yeah. you know everybody's finally you know getting out and stuff. Get to travel and see it. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Um. Oh yeah. Favorite anime? What was uh? Um, Samurai Shampoo. Okay, Samurai Shampoo. All yeah. right, it is yeah, funny. Oh, sorry. No, you're good, bro. You're good. I was just saying that hits home for me. Uh, interesting fact is, uh, well, oh yeah, when I did the report about Flame, one of their songs that made it into their sound into the soundtrack. It was, I will believe, oh, it's yeah, the, yeah. it's the ending. It was, it was a song called "Shake You Down." From Samurai Shampoo. Yeah, they they had a soundtrack called. I think it was either later in the series or something like that. But they did officially have a soundtrack to the show and their their song was called shake you down literally no translation shake you down in english shake you down 
I'm gonna have to look that up. Okay. The, the one ending that I know that they always kept was um, Shiki no Uka. Okay. Yeah. So that might be the. Well, it might be the same song. I don't know. All I'm right. I mean, okay. Then, I mean, who knows? But I don't know. My second though is Yuroni Kenshin. Yuroni Kenshin. All right. Yes. Yep. Speaking of which, yeah, the uh, Judy and Mary, I did, I did their report. Oh, dude, <laughs> that's lit, man. Yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna share the link to both of those uh, soon. Is uh, okay. Flame and uh, Judy and Mary right after this? Speaking of which, of Japanese musicians, um, mm -hmm. if do you, do you like all like of Asian musicians, right? Like this. Yes. Okay, so on that note, since we're on. Jap Japanese? Do you have like a favorite one of Japanese? Sanjube. Huh? Sanjube. Sanjube. Okay. Also known as Luigi Bees. Gotcha. The reason why is because he is one of the best composers ever. R.I.P. to him. Mm. Um, but he did him, Fat John. In my opinion, they're like the Godfathers of Lo-Fi. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. Right. Now, I love that the style is coming back too. Like, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. It's a, it's uh, it's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. It's dope. Um, yeah. uh, so let me see. Uh, uh, do you have like, especially because we're I'm on the topic of like the things I'm doing recently. Uh, favorite Korean artists. Favorite Korean artists. Um, okay. So my I don't know this band's name, but my sister. Um, Kat actually introduced me to a song. I might can if figure I, it out. If I, if, I, if I have that song in my Facebook, so I'll send it to you. Okay. Um, but she sent it to me, and I and I just really like that song. Okay. Um, what, what's another dude? His name's like Jay something. Jay? Jay, Jay, um. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I'm... He's a rapper. His name is Jay. I think I know who you're talking about. I know about. he dances a lot, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a thing where he was in a boy group at one time, and then yeah. he he drifted away and be like, I'm a, I'm a rap. I'm going to do my own thing. I know exactly who you, it. It's on the tip of my tongue, but when I'm editing this, there'll just be a picture of who it is, so we'll <laughs> yeah. both know. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh Oh, okay, okay. We're on now to, like, the second to last part. So now, um, what is your uh, favorite food? What is your favorite food? It could be from here or anywhere. I love Italian food, and I love... I love... I'm going to say anything to do with chicken. Do anything with chicken? Okay, I see yeah, that. Because, like... Um, it's funny because I'm really big on pasta, <laughs> like, and my favorite one of my favorite foods is chicken alfredo. Chicken alfredo. <laughs> but yes. let me ask you this though: Have you ever had chicken alfredo lasagna? I've heard of it, but never yeah. tried it. Let me tell you something, man. It, it sounds it sounds delicious wow. though. Wow! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really good. Um. Interesting thing, um, like my last guest, Malik, he is a gamer, and also mm -hmm. another person who was really big into like what we're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. He was a guest from last year named Noel Comics. He, okay. it was amazing to figure out that there was a, a a television channel that it was called. Have you heard of this channel called the International Channel? Mm -mm. I've never heard of it. So basically, it it had like Korean. Japanese variety, like it just had everything, and it lasted. If I, if I if I don't get this right here, at least when I do this video coming up, I'll get it right then. From ninety one okay. to like two thousand and eight, that's how long it lasted. It's called the International Network First Channel. International Channel, just that, okay. and you know he reported a lot on it. Like he's like not only a history buff of it, but he's actually been like. A part of the thing that was going on too. Funny enough, is a uh, twenty years ago, like I la mentioned last time, it was where they called this the anime invasion and stuff like that. And it yeah. was crazy because at the time I was like five years old, and my very mm -hmm. first anime of all time was Hamtaro. 
at five. I know. I know about him, though. And it was just yeah. like, I can't believe that's when it, this happened. And it was like, wow, I caught it kind of forefront, too, which is that. Thank you, man. <laughs> That's what's up, though. But it was, you know, when I realized it was completely different was a video I also recently did before my fourth anniversary was uh, Azamanga Dio. That was the show that was like, yo, this? I that one. Yeah. I'll, again, that's another link I'll share to you. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, it was basically a show where, like, six girls from high school, they're, like, learning about life and stuff. And came out, again, 20 years ago. Uh, two years later was when they dubbed it in in the U.S. and uh, okay. for me and my sis, my little sister, that was like our favorite show to watch together on in front of the computer. And that was like our life is like we watched anime on the computer and on television. Mm-hmm. At this, and I was I'm definitely happy that I think it's been about ten years since the tsunami stuff came back because it was yeah. it's great because yeah. that actually. And I remember what happened. Rest in peace to the original person who did the voice acting for, for uh, Tom. Yeah. And it was I remember because this when I caught it, it was like 2007, and I was like, "Dang, I was just getting to know this." And then <laughs> when when 2012 came, I didn't know if it was actually happening, and it was like, it's and now it's officially been 10 years, which that's the part that's super crazy because I was like. Oh my god, like it's back. It's, it's all part, back. It's a part of um it's a part of a lot of people's childhoods. Right, I think, yeah. I think that's what makes people happy about it. Right, you know? yeah, especially like I get to I get to relive it or I get to share it with my friends or get to share it with my kids. Man, we're gonna kids. share this with our grandchildren. That like for me, yeah, like I said, I was pretty new to the Tanami game, but I know I remember like catching Bobo Bo on it, and I was like, like I said, I was just learning about it. I saw Naruto, the Zatch Bell. That was it was a vague memory, but I remember catching that. It because thing was, I was like in elementary and stuff, and I was just like, sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night. I was like, look at Dragon Ball, like, what is this? So the Trigun was on there too. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything yeah. was on. Every single piece of it was on there. Like, it was history. So, yeah. so one of the last questions I would like to ask is, um, okay. what would you like the world to remember you by? I've thought about this question for many years. Um, I just want to be re- remembered as a person who spent their time as a good father, a good husband, mm. and a person who spent their time making people laugh. Okay. I'm, I'm not a comedian at all. But you are kind of funny, though. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, but as a as a streamer, as a as a YouTuber, because I'm just not getting back into the YouTube game. Right, right, right. Um, I just want people to. I want to connect with those who are depressed, mm. because there are dark times and people all the time, and when people see me, I want them to just go like. I have something to live for, right. and this person makes me laugh, and I'm okay with life. That is what I would like. To do. So that's that's my point. that's that's the best words to live by, man. I know I it's been so long since we met each other, and I'm again, mm-hmm. once again, thank you so much for uh, doing this interview with me. And let, let me say this. Okay, okay. I'll do any interview you ever ask me because. You know, you you are a great person. You have a wonderful kindred spirit. Thank you, man. And I don't don't ever sell yourself short. Right. Like because people that accept interviews from you ten three years from now, ten years from now, most people are gonna go back and be like, yo, oh, like he worked from here and got here. People need you, man. Don't ever sell yourself short. So yeah. I thank you for allowing me to come on here. I really appreciate that. Thank you, man. Most definitely. All right. Well, 
it's time for us to go, and I got to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. Before we get to the shout-outs, I'd like to show you guys something that I wanted to share for a while, which is my analytics. So here it is. So here in these analytics, this is the overview, the niches, and a lot of other things. Previously, when I first started this channel, I had a lot of people that were subscribing that was watching it, and now we have a lot of not subscribed. But in the good news, we this channel has reached over 20 subs. So now we're going to move on to the shout outs. Besides our guest today, which is Jay Hattori, we have Face the Music and its viral podcast. Now, coming up next is you already know not just another episode of this, but also a special of a third Korean report from the main channel. So I will see you guys next time. And until then, goodbye! Talking fun with Edda.